Yeah, he's he's usually. I think he starts logging in at eight, and it takes him about ten minutes to <laughs> to get his computer to turn on. So, um, and I talked to uh, Francois yesterday. He texts me. He's uh, he's in Sturgis. He's uh, on the way, or he's in Sturgis. Yes. Yeah, he's wow. up there on his. He sent me some pictures of his motorcycle and stuff. It's pretty is nice. Is that North Dakota? South? Is it north or south? North, north or south? I think Sturgis is South Dakota. I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never. I've always wanted to go, just to go. But it's, I, it's a little. In his yeah. book, I read uh, in detail about the trip he did before. You know, uh, taking the bike cross across country. So uh, it's quite amazing, you know, that I never experienced that whole biking thing. No, no. <laughs> I gave up on that when I got into bodybuilding. Uh, kind of same, you know. I mean, yeah. I was yeah. a couple of weeks on the bike and uh, had a little incident and think this is not going to uh, be no. <laughs> healthy or end up good for me. No. Yeah. Not yeah. the way they drive out here. Have no. you seen the way they speed between cars on the highway? And I've, JP, I know you've seen that out here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They, they they zoom between the cars. Yeah, I didn't know you. Got, uh, the first time I went to California, I, I saw that, and it's you can't do that. Thing. You can't do that over here. You can't go in between the cars. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, but you guys are allowed to do that, I guess. Yeah. 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 Hey, what's the rules on passing on the right side in uh, on the freeway in Florida? What do you mean? Can you pass left and right a car? Uh yeah, you can pass as long as it's a lane. Or you mean to go yeah. outside the lane on the right side? No, in, in, in you know in Europe you can only pass to the left of to the, the car. Left side only. The right. Oh no, you left can side only. Yeah. No, you can pass on either side on the freeway. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. And they did that. They don't have that rule in America. You can pass. It doesn't matter what lane. If it's open, zoom. Oh yeah. 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 All right. What what do we talk about? Whatever you guys want to talk about. So then we had some, we had a great show. You guys had a great show down there huh, last weekend. Yeah, the Tampa. We were we were talking about before we started recording. It's incredible. I mean, that show is just, I mean, the date is not ideal, but the show is great. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, I don't know. It used to be the last one before the Olympia, not anymore. Right? There's more to come now. How, yeah. how many more shows are there before the Olympia? Mm -hmm. Well, it's Texas you know? this weekend, and then I don't know what else is left there. So the open, I think the field is pretty much set. There's one more spot or so, uh, other than yeah. uh, whoever gets in by points. So uh, when was Atlanta? Have we already had Atlanta. I don't know about Atlanta. Oh. So the open was very interesting. I watched a little bit of uh, Chris Acido, Hanson, and. Dave talking about it. I heard, yeah, Chris was a little upset, huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he, I wasn't there and, and Chris totally agreed with him. It's funny that, you know, first, when I looked at the pictures of the pre-judging, I kind of had come all winning. Again, being very careful if you're not there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, kind of changed my mind. So after listening to Chris, I went back and looked at it in details again. And yeah, he does have a point, you know. And it reminds me, you know, I, I don't know. It's Achim is sure ba back where he was when he plays sixth, more or less. You know, now I hope he can get a little harder. But uh, you know, Kamal. It's amazing that quality, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has it's like a, a young guy, uh, he's mm -hmm. 51 years old. You've hardly ever seen that. Not even Dex had that young look in the last couple of years, uh, you know. He was just kind of barely hanging on to it. You now, where you see like the stomach not washed out, the legs the same size still. It's mm -hmm. just like, you know, would you? It, it's incredible. Um, he must do a lot of stuff right or started very late in his career and partially yeah. genetics. I mean, I'm, very impressed with the guy. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know he was fifty-one. I knew he was up there, yeah. close to fifty. I didn't realize he was fifty-one. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Now he's not going to the Olympia. He's retiring soon. I no, no, he's going to the Olympia two twelve. Going to the Olympia. Mm, okay. Uh, okay. So one of Dave's wow. theories was that they did not let him win, uh, although everybody there had him winning. 
because he had no intention going to the Open at the Olympia, so they didn't want to waste uh, a spot, a qualifier spot. I mean, I, I don't know if there's any truth to it. And Hansen was uh, listening to a judge afterwards who was just clearly referring to the, the size, you know, it's all about right. pretty much size bodybuilding, which, you mm -hmm. know, of course, we all disagree on that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a very interesting show also in the 212. Um, you know, Keon, even with like 90% shape, won yeah. that pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah. So that was pretty impressive. So uh, I'm going to heads up to my uh, friend Patrick uh, in Switzerland, who's coaching him now. I mean, wow. you cannot deny that after he switched to Patrick, he just made a big jump, you know? So, yeah. He reminds me of a little bit of Brian Buchanan and a little bit of Robbie Robinson. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, like the structure is just incredible. Crazy. Now, I'm really curious if he can get a little harder. I mean, he has to be a little bit harder. How does he fit in with uh, Derek? And um, what's the little guy trained by Matt? Oh, uh yeah, that's crazy shape, man. Who played? Who, who won two years ago? I mean, look at that. I mean, it's yeah, as good as it gets. Shape, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to beat. What do you think that is? About a twenty-five inch waist. You know, it looks that small. I tell you, it's probably about 27, 28, Believe it or not, but with that vacuum, mm -hmm. those small joints, and it it, it appears. I mean, the, the illusion is incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will have to see a lineup without doing the vacuum, but uh, that's exactly. pretty much. But that it's vacuum makes incredible. the pose. I mean, he's, you know, shapes just off the chain. So I, I, I don't know how uh, Chris in any way could criticize that and have him, have the other guy, what's, what's the other guy's name, have the other guy winning. I, I just don't see that. No, if you look at the you pose... Go ahead. You know, you can't just give it to the hardest guy. I mean, you know, there has to be a good mix. Oh. And this guy is close to unbeatable here, Keel. Yeah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just incredible. Yeah, shape, symmetry, and balance is just crazy. It's kind of a before and after. Yeah. Well, that was the Olympia last time. He competed in the 212, but, you know, mm -hmm. he kind of totally overdieted, had some yeah. mental issues there, and then... Mm -hmm. That, you know, that I, I think he was already better than he just didn't mm -hmm. get it together. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm very, very impressed. And it would be nice. Yeah. Uh, what's the guy who won the Olympia two years ago in the 212? The short guy, uh, Cl Claridia, Cl yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you see how he is uh <laughs> give, give him full speed? I just saw picks with uh 205, you know, usually we'll see around 185. I mean, he's not going to just lay down uh and mm -hmm. let uh. Derek win the next few years. I mean, he, he is really, really stepping on the gas. Right. Uh, that guy is just a mini Ronnie Coleman guy. So it'll be interesting where Keon fits in there right. and then come all on top of that. So top four, I think, are pretty mm -hmm. much given in that in that category. Do you think Derek can make it down to 212? Well, he's not going I mean, to go to the... He's not qualified for the Open, so... Right, but... You know, yeah. Not That's much of a choice. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be really curious to see, uh, even when he won, I'm still not crazy about the quality of his like chest, shoulders, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. he's just great from back, from behind. I'm just wondering if that's really the reason he can't get this hard is uh, if it's, if he's just getting too flat when he goes this low, but I don't know if that's true because you know, you're, you're not just going to get just softer when you get flatter. I don't exactly know, you know, from the height is great. I mean, it's amazing, 212. How can this be 212? Yeah. Yeah. You've seen him guest post in Pittsburgh next to uh, Nick, you know. I mean, sure. mm -hmm. yeah, Nick was a little bigger, but he's not well, we, much smaller, we, yeah. we know he was 212 the night before, but I seriously doubt he's 212 here. On stage. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. When did they weigh in? The day of or the day before? Yeah, it's usually the day before. Okay, so we have a little bit of time. It's if, not if, not, if not two days before, I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, if everything goes normal and the feet slightly improves the quality, there's no way you can beat them. You know, I mean, even Keone, yeah. and they, they lose too much in the back poses. 
And then, uh, did you guys see uh, Romy finally release something? Yep. Yeah, I just posted that. Uh, so first, I seen the picture, and I was kind of in shock. You know, I didn't think he was very good, but then when I saw the video, he's very good. You know? <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. So, mm, you know what it reminds me? Here he is. If they both kind of come in good, you know, uh, Romy and Nick, because it's going to at some point be between Nick and him. Oh, definitely. Bill Brandon, I don't know how much longer they can squeeze him with that. Otherwise, beautiful, but this is the half a bodybuilder like, compared mm -hmm. to these two guys, you know. So uh, I'd be very curious to see, you know. Remember, Gaspari tried every year and every year. He tried to compete against Haney, and it just never worked out. And then one year in Göteborg, he came in much, much bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Eight, you know. Seven. Uh, and still <laughs> didn't work out, guy. You know, so it reminds me a little bit of that. If Romy is a little better than last year, I don't know if we can really beat him. You know, the guys up there. I mean, Nick is going to be a foot mm -hmm. shorter than him, guy. Is he in the states here, or is he still overseas? No, he's overseas. Yeah, okay. He's just gonna probably come to uh, work with Dennis at the very end. Yeah. yeah, I think he did a few weeks before the show. I hope he was just working out because the heavy breathing really worries me, but that's another topic. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I was, uh, you know, 326, 336, something like that. I mean, this is crazy. What's he yeah. doing on stage? About 300? Yeah. 305, yeah. somewhere Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. That's crazy. That's what, was, what was Ronnie on stage? Well, it was between, um, you know, the two years he got really heavy. 286 and over 290. Wow. But I mean, it was clearly a little bit on the heavy side. Mm -hmm. Although I still think the 2003 was the most unbeatable uh, version of any bodybuilder ever. You know, I mean, it's like Jay said, you know, yes, quality wasn't 100% there, but how are you going to fight that? You know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, I mean, uh, Ronnie uh, was still totally here different animal than, than mm -hmm. even Romy is. You know, I mean, the cuts and the, it's just totally different. Yeah. But then it's just assuming that Nick is going to get into the top three. And I, I don't see Nick being in any way outside the top three. It's just close to impossible with the improvements he made. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering where our friend Charles, you know, because I, I seen him getting bigger and better and bigger and better. Mm -hmm where he, uh, this is going to be one of those moments for Charles where once the top guys are there, he is just, is just going to be hitting mm -hmm. reality. Mm -hmm. Or can he really slip into those top five, six? You know, we'd be very curious to see. He might be a dark horse. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Possible. yeah. He definitely has the foundation for it, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So, Jason, you're staying uh, in the Chateau with me, yeah? Yeah, yep. Yeah, so uh, you have your own kind of uh, timeshare. We couldn't get one with a shared living room, uh, a kitchen. So you're going to be, I mean, you, you're on our list, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in the past I had this like two rooms on the left hand side in the middle living room thing was shared, so we couldn't get that. So you're on your own there. Well, okay, whatever. I mean, uh, uh -huh. yeah. Are, are you guys staying there too or? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. I was just hoping we can swap pipes or something, but it's going to be more and more difficult now. You know? Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> I can, I can pick one up when I'm there. So <laughs> there you go. Oh, you don't come, you don't come with a, with a wife or girlfriend. No, 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 no. Well, I don't know. We'll see by then. I still got a few months. <laughs> we're recording, we're recording here. I'm going to, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, Bonac back in the race, huh? So I heard he's doing really, really good. Yeah, he's um, dangerous. He could be yeah. in the top three or four. Oh, yeah. Oh, Easily. absolutely. Yeah. So we have now top four. We have now Nick, Rami. Where the hell is Hardy going to be there? It's going to be top three or four, too. And then uh, oh, yeah. uh, Brandon and uh, Bonac. So I think top five will be very, very hard for anybody else to get in. What do you think of Hunter? He, he took fourth last year. I don't know. 
going to be a lot better than last year. Otherwise, Ian and those guys will all pass him. You know, I mean, right. it, was yeah, a total, it was a total gift that four plays. But yeah, yeah, he has the structure. And uh, so I'm just still waiting for him to really look dry. Yeah, he needs to dry out quite Jesus, a bit. Jesus, look at that. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was... Uh... So I'm wondering uh, if you have... Uh, if Hungary? He has, He's hung, hung, hungry? Hungary? A picture of the stomach somewhere, you know? Yeah. It's this pretty... Con I don't know. I was mentioning on another podcast that he had uh, hernia surgery. So nobody else on the podcast knew anything about it. But then on the comments, uh, it was kind of... People uh, agreed with me that he had hernia surgery, but he must have uh, recovered very quickly and it's fine from right. that. That well, takes yeah. about six weeks where you can't do anything at all. Yeah, it was more like th four weeks in my case, but yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But he probably needed a little break anyway after Boston, yeah. Seems like hernia surgery is pretty common in these pros, huh? It probably is. I don't quite Why, why is that? It was well, the stomach wall. Just the pushing and pushing and pushing on the, I mean, did you ever see a, a big picture of the stomach on a leg press on the side, you know, on the wrong moment? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's yeah. why Charles Glass always recommended to uh, put the belt on. Yeah. To make sure this is not, uh, you know, uh, getting out of control. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, the intestines tears through the stomach wall. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. noticed a lot of these taught like Phil. Obviously, Phil had it, and now with Bonex had it. A lot of yeah. uh, you can kind of fix it once or twice, but then you know if you have to do it several times, it just never looks the same again. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so Phil is uh, Phil is uh, commenting the Olympia this year. I saw that. Yeah. So I guess that means he's officially done, huh? Oh, I think so. But you know, yeah. we'll see. Yeah. You know. Arnold was officially as a commentator in Australia in 1980. Do you remember? Mm. Right. And then right. decided to then they decided to take the shirt off and compete. <laughs> <laughs> he, he might pull something like that off. <laughs> uh, it could be. It could be. He he'll come talk in between. Uh, you know, prejudging and the and the finals. Did Arnold, did Arnold not say, "Well, I, I'm here and I'm already in shape, so why not?" Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So I always I always take my posing trunks with me no matter where I travel. You never know. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can jump on stage. So you did you did compete, yeah? Huh? I did. I did. I did uh I did a couple shows here locally and then I uh I did Pittsburgh. So So how did Pittsburgh go? Uh not well. Not well. I think uh I learned some stuff from it. I definitely learned I needed to travel sooner. I, mm -hmm. I, I flew up the day before and it, I got layovers in a couple airports and wow. I ran out of food and I was scrambling and it just, my conditioning just wasn't what mm -hmm. I wanted it to be. So, so you competed in the over 40? Yeah. Uh, the over 45, I did the classic physique this year and I, mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't have, I should have stuck with bodybuilding when I did, when I did it two years ago, I got fourth mm -hmm. and this year I think I got, I got second call out. I was sixth. Yep. So, which well, wasn't bad. I mean, it was still in the top 10. So, it's, it's the national. So, congratulations anyway. I had a winner in that show. I had an over 60 winner in that show. Did you? Yeah, it was his, uh, his third show. Oh, okay. So, he did a local show last year, which he won. Then uh, we went to the, you know, there's two Masters Nationals. There's one over here at the West Coast and one at the East Coast. Uh huh. So then we went to the one at the West Coast, and there was no over 60 category. So he was the best guy over 60, but had to compete in the 50, placed mm -hmm. only fifth. So then Pittsburgh now is third show, and he won. I was pretty happy about oh, that. Oh, good, good. Uh, Very nice. So he's got his uh, pro card. No, they gave two pro cards uh, in the overall, and he was not in the top two. Uh, he was third uh, in the overall. So, uh, I mean... Uh, you know, it's his third show, so it's not to get carried away. Not, I don't quite understand pro cards in the Masters. What, what, what are they for exactly? Uh, well, you get, I mean, you can, there's our Pratt Master Pro shows. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, like the this Pittsburgh show had a pro show at the end of it. Uh, so you can win money there. Or... Yeah. Yeah. But is there any others other than Pittsburgh? 
Mm, yeah, there's yeah, because there Daytona has a pro a Masters Pro Show. Okay. Yeah. Like in Bikini Masters, there's shows all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think the I think these local shows are, are starting to pick up on it because you mm. know you're seeing 40, 50 year old guys that are look look really good. Yeah. So I, yeah, I mean, and they're, and they're getting a little still, big, more of a demand for it. Still, kind of amazing that they have a thirty-five-year-old masses category. I mean, thirty-five, you're hardly in your prime. 30, yeah, I was gonna say most <laughs> most guys are winning their Olympias when they're thirty-five. You know, uh, yeah. uh, right. So, yep. Hey, here's an interesting story. You guys hear about the release of Bertel Fox out of the St. Kitts prison? No. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, yeah. Somebody on the what ground? That. Yeah, after 25 years. It's like a pardon, or or was he had pretty much I, life? I guess they gave him. He had a life sentence. Well, he got originally, parole. Originally, he had a death sentence, right? He was due to yeah. hang. And then supposedly, this is a rumor I heard. Arnold got in touch with the government over there and got him off death row. Then he got life in prison. So he was there for 25 years. And now he's been released. He's just been 25 years. It has been. Okay. I mean, <laughs> it's really good, good for him. I don't know how I feel about it, but good for him. Well, I mean, 25 years in a St. Kitts prison has got to be a nightmare, man. Prison oh. anywhere is a nightmare, but especially in oh, St. Yeah. Kitts. You know, he did slaughter two people. Yeah? Right. right. So, so, which are not here. Yeah. Yeah. Which are not here. Yeah. That's true. Let's see if I can bring... All right, so I think he was, uh, what I heard, he was quite a celebrity before that over there, right, in Sam Kitts. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was the island hero. They said he went from hero to zero. Well, let's hope he gets at least up to 10 or 20 again, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually pardoned by the governor general of St. Saint, Saint Kitts. Right. On August 4th, 2022, upon release, uh, so yeah, he moved to, to he moved to London. He's back in London with his son. Mm -hmm. Was he deported or or why is he back in London? Uh, it just says that's where he. Well, no, because he was pardoned, so they wouldn't have to yeah. deport him. Yeah. No. Yeah. So yeah. St. Kitts. What on the jurisdiction is the St. Kitts under? I don't Caribbean know. Island. Oh, I, we don't. Yeah. Yeah. They have their own. Yeah. It's Caribbean island. Yeah. He yeah. pled guilty in 1998 for a double murder. Killing his former fiance Leosa Brown and his mother, yeah. and her mother, and her yeah. mother Violet. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, well, let's see if we hear from him again. That's good in some ways, you know. So, yeah, well, you never know. Yeah, yeah. maybe we maybe we'll get him on the podcast. You ever meet him? I've seen him many times. Uh, I wouldn't say meet him, but you know, I was uh, going to the FIBO in Germany. He was one of the main reasons I went. Right. Okay. Yeah, so, and, he, uh, he he won the 1969 Junior Mister Britain at 18 years old. Right. Yeah. He, Let's see what else. Uh, he won pretty much everything at the World. AAU Mister Mister World in '76, Amateur Naba in '77, Mister mm -hmm. Universe in '78, '79. Yeah, he won the Napa Universe about four times. He earned his pro car. Joe Weider sponsored. Fox has moved to Los Angeles in 1981. Uh, nicknamed Brutal Brutal. Yeah. I don't know if he did better than fifth at the Olympia. I think fifth was... No, nine. that was his highest placing. In 83 in Munich. Yeah. It says yeah, his no, best placings uh, was 82 Night of Champions and 83 Swiss Grand Prix. Or... Yes. or yeah. He says he uh see Mr. Olympia's highest placing was fifth in 1983. Right. Mm -hmm. Hey Ian. Yeah, hey, you, yeah. We're talking about your neighbor over Myrtle there. Myrtle Fox. Myrtle Fox. Did you see oh, him yet? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I saw that he got released, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's living over in your old neck of the woods. Did you know Myrtle? No. Had, you never met him? No, nope, never met him. No. Crazy. Like Let me guys tell you a funny story about Myrtle, if you don't mind. Good. I met Bertle back in 83, 84. His wife at the time, Kim, worked for Weeder. So I went up to the Weeder building, had a meeting with Joe. I was with Kim and I was talking to her. I said, well, how does Bertle like America? She said, he doesn't. I said, well, why not? She goes, well, he hates guns. 
right? Obviously, obviously not that much. He hates guns. Hmm. I'll tell you what happened later. She left him because he was abusive physically, right? And I talked to Rick Bain up about it and we kind of discussed it. Rick Bain told me what was going on. So she left him and it was years later in, uh, what city was it? There was a city in England. Berto and I did a seminar together. It was for a guy named Don Williams. And this was Olympia Gym in Red Car, right? Right. And I had two seminars to do with Berto. And then his seminar tour continued. I was out after the first two. I knew Don pretty well. I used to train in his gym and I lived in Red Car. So I got invited. So Don was a horse farmer. So on the tour, he originally... When the tour started, he brought a horse box in the back of his truck or van, right? And that was for us to sleep in so he wouldn't have to get us a hotel room. <laughs> and Bertle snapped. <laughs> Bertle went ape shit about sleeping in this box, right? And I didn't say a whole lot because Bertle just exploded. And I just kind of stood back and let him. Bertle went nuts on this guy. So the guy's kind of, all right, he goes, I'll, I'll get you a room. And he got us a hotel room. But I was with Bertle, and I tell you what, he was heartbroken. We hardly talked. I didn't know him that well, but the whole time we were together, he didn't say much, but he had that look on his face. He's just frustration. And that was after she left him. This wasn't too long after that. I don't think he ever really got over her. And so, so what, year, what, year, what year was that? We're looking at around 86 i believe when he many 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 he moved to st kitts he moved to st kitts he opened a gym there called fox's gym yeah. on the ocean beautiful gym supposedly i never saw i saw pictures of the gym from the outside never saw the inside so he opened the gym and supposedly the story is i believe he went to a wedding in london and this girl cheated on him right he she comes back finds out about it, and that's when this shit hit the fan. Mm. <laughs> she was very, very young. Yeah, she was like a She was queen. like 20, 21 years old. And Bertle, by that time, was probably, had to be in his 50s. So that he's in his 70s now? He's 71 right now. Mm. Wow. So Good. the story is, he went to the mother's shop. She had a, uh, she was a uh, upholsterer, where she, you know, made clothes. And that's where the shooting took place. Hmm. That's crazy. I know Bertle was one of my early inspirations. I mean, when I first started, Bertle had won the Nabajuni Mr. Britain. There'd been a lot. Brian Buchanan won the Nabajuni Mr. There was a lot of really legendary bodybuilders that had that title, which is why I wanted to win it. But I know Bert, the whole thing with Bertle, and I was captivated by it was at, six, at 15, he had 15 in Sharp. At 16, he had 16 in Sharp. At 17, he had 17 in Sharp. Exactly. But, by the time he was 20, he had 20 inch arms. Yeah. So I was always chasing that every year, trying to get my arms <laughs> to be as big as Bertle Fox. And I knew several uh, people that I trained with him. So I knew what he was, he, I, I know his, his form was weird. It's yeah, terrible. Yeah, 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 loose. Very, very loose form. He had yeah. some really <laughs> weird ways of doing exercises, but he was immensely strong. And, I mean, and, and if you look at some of the, uh, like, like the, the year Samir won the Olympia, everybody that was in Germany, right? And everybody was, was in Germany. Nuts. Everybody was going nuts for Bertel at that show. Yeah. Um, but you know, I mean, I, I think that the the phrase "beef," which was thrown around in crowds, beef it. Uh, that, that that was all from Bertel. That, that, that was Bertel. Yeah, that all They were screaming. Bertel. We were together when we did the seminar. They were screaming, "Beef it, Bertel! Beef it! Beef it! <laughs> beef it!" And I'm just like, it was it was crazy. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, it was crazy, uh, man. So, oh. so you kind of find him very quiet, kind of an intro. He, he never said a whole lot. He, he he never spoke much. Real quiet, you know. I mean, we he talked a little bit, say some things, but you could tell he wasn't in a good mood. You, yeah. you know what I mean? He just he wasn't happy. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So how how was his seminar? Like I, I just don't see from what I saw from him. I don't see him going in front of people and talking about anything. He's not, he's not, I mean, he did pretty good seminars. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, they weren't terrible. I mean, he, he's not very articulate, you know, but I mean, he spoke well and he, he did them well. 
Mm. So what's the, what's the, when you guys were younger, what's the best seminar you ever attended? For me, it was Mike Mincer. Yeah. Yeah. And then I trained with him two weeks after the seminar. And that's where I got the idea later on. That's, that's basically, I use his philosophy for my training today, which is high intensity, low volume. Mm -hmm. But he trained super heavy duty. I trained moderately light or moderately heavy only. So, so how many sets did you really do? I'm, I'm sorry. How, how many, many sets did he really do per body part? You know, he says, you know, he did two warm up sets and his third set was all out to all out failure. So he's the, you know, we're looking at back something like 10, 12 sets, chest, eight, nine sets. I mean, pretty low compared to what a lot of guys do today. Mm -hmm. But the third set was taken to all out failure. So the first two were getting ready for the third. So pretty much what I did, you know. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, it's simple training and it's very <laughs> basic. Basically compound exercises for the most part. Mm -hmm. But I, I did do uh, a lot of machines. I, I liked the machines a lot, but I did, you know, for back, I did seven exercises, one set. But yeah. often also, you know, depending on what exercise you switch to, you need one or two, I wouldn't call them one more set approach sets. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, once, once I was warmed up, every set was the failure. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do two prepping sets. As soon as I was warm, it was balls out, all in. Going yeah. I mean, de depending on what exercise I switch to, I could do that. But when you're going to switch from... Uh, to deadlift example, for example, and you know, I, I wanted to do yeah. like seven, four reps for 700 pounds, you know, you can't just put 700 pounds up. Go. Yeah, no, no, yeah. No, you don't want to do that, yeah, right. Yeah, for sure. But what, what, what was your favorite seminar growing up, John Pierre? Who, who did you like to see? Uh, I've seen a lot of bad ones, <laughs> a lot of bad ones. <laughs> the worst, what's the worst one you've seen? A guy who uh, stretched for uh, 30 minutes, he was stopping so slow. I mean, I wanted to freaking die. <laughs> he was just about stretching. First 30 minutes, he was European champion and uh, second at uh, Miss Universe. Holy moly, was that bad. Oh. Uh, the best one, not so much do I remember what he said, and although there was a translator, but just when it came to his hour, to his, uh, you know, the, the way he looked and everything, the way he spoke was Tom Platt's. Yeah, that was my, that was my yeah. favorite. I would oh, yeah. imagine that would be the best one, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, incredible. I, I mean, sorry, go on. none of the seminars I went to, you really learned much. You know, they didn't tell you anything. I don't know if that was just usual back then. You know, you were a bit, you'd be happy to find out if they even take steroids, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so. And you but, did you have uh, to pay for them back then? I do not remember if I had to pay for it or not for yeah. this one. I don't think so. Yeah. But mostly, if you had to pay, it was like 10, 20 bucks or so, you know. So, right, right. Uh, but I remember um, I was living in Zurich, uh, but 16, 17 years old, and I heard in the radio that this uh, guy with the biggest legs of all time is uh, having a seminar. And it was the long stairwell coming down to the gym, and he had this white, uh, white Christmas sweater on, but just cut out enough to see his chest and he was so tanned and then a white sweater and his smile. I bet uh, that was the he... same seminar tour that I saw. What year was that? Do you know? Was it like uh, 82, 83? 86, 84, I don't oh, know. Right, okay. Yeah, 84, probably more. And the smile on his face. And, uh, you know, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't really understand much he, he said. You know, he was talking a lot about positive thinking and stuff like that where I had no use for that kind of stuff back then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, Tom Platts made six figures a year on seminars alone. Oh yeah. Hey, I mean, he, he had he 60 seminars. Of money. I bet. He, had, he yeah. had 60 seminars in like 90 days, what I remember yeah. in, in Europe. So imagine the money he made just yeah. from seminars alone. Wow. Uh, I saw him guest pose in Sweden once and he, he came out and they were cheering. They were I was going to ask, did, did he guest pose a lot? Yeah, he did. I did. He did. Mm -hmm. Tom Platz was a very, very popular bodybuilder. Very oh, popular. Immensely popular, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, growing up, I think Lee Haney and Tom Platz were my two idols. Yeah. Growing up.
I'll tell you a funny yeah. story. Tom Platts and I went to the same high school in Kansas City, Missouri. He told his us mother, that before, I think. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, I yeah. kid you not. We had the same gym coach, a guy named Max Hayes. So I showed him a picture of Tom in 78 after Tom won the university. He just looked at it and goes, I said, this is what you want to do? I said, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to be just like that. And he just looked at me like I had a problem. I'm like, hey, poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> why would you want to do that? He looked at me and he said, why would you want to do that? Yeah. I said, oh, this is great. I said, look at this. And I, yeah, I, I, I was like, a, you know, 17 years old at the time. Mm-hmm. And he just, I, and, and, you know, I always said, very much admire about him. Uh, the moment he chose to retire, yeah. he didn't qualify for the Olympia for the very first time. I think you had to be top three. He oh, play, yeah. I think he, he uh, competed in Florida and he placed fourth and walked away. Yeah, I remember Because he looked good. Yeah. He looked good, you know. Good. And that's exactly how you should do it. You know, most people, uh, you know, probably including me, they make up an excuse and uh, this and that and so on and so But if you're good and you don't qualify for the Olympia, Go do something else, yeah. Mm-hmm. I tell you, you, remember he tore his bicep. Yeah, yeah. I was in the yep. gym. It was Go's gym in Venice where he tore his bicep. And I was there when he did it that day. Wow. Mm-hmm. And then from there, that was one of the gym. funniest things of the seminar because he was talking about it, mm-hmm. and he was saying that uh, people are saying that the left and right arm they look totally different now, and. Uh, through his like positive mental kind of thing, he got the arm back to normal. And uh, this is the proof. And he made a double biceps pose and one arm was gone. But he, yeah. <laughs> he, no, tried, yeah. to, he tried to talk us into that the arm is still there, you know. <laughs> oh, and I say to my friend, I said, I don't know, I don't see any arm here again, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I remember he did the demonstration on a leg extension machine and it was like a gym 80. Yeah, uh, brand and you know it was very very heavy the whole stack and then you could kind of shift to the right and then you could double the weight so for all of us when we doubled the weight it felt like it's welded together you know <laughs> it's just not freaking move God, you know mm. i did not see him warm up or anything and he was sitting on that machine double up the weight and just did like freaking 30 reps Wow. Like a freaking maniac screaming and yelling and, you know, and, and, and it doesn't matter. Form was terrible, but it doesn't matter just to move yeah. that stack. I mean, the guy had so much strength. I mean, it's unbelievable. His intensity was a legendary. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Mind, mind-boggling, yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing, I, on that same seminar tour, I was 16 years old. I'll never forget it. And I went to see him in a place called Osset, Osset Town Hall. And um, I, I he'd, he'd just written a book. I, that was probably the same... He just brought his own book out, right? Right. Remember, I remember, remember that, book. JP? And he just wrote, I, wrote a book. I, I don't. I don't. I'm yeah. pretty sure he just brought a book out. And I, obviously, I bought the book, got him to sign it, and I got my picture taken with him. And then years later, I'm at FIBO. This will be 1995, probably. It was the year I qualified for the Olympia. Meta, I was at Met, the Metar Expo with Milos, um, Paul De Meo, um, Ursula Sarchez, and a few others. And Tom Platts came by. And I'm, I'm like still fanboying, you know, even though I've just qualified for Olympia. I walk around, I get I get my picture taken with him, and I, I have the picture somewhere. And I said to him, I said, you probably don't remember, but I remember meeting you when I was 16. He said, I absolutely remember. And he, he, he named the date and the, and the venue and everything. I'm like, damn. Mm-hmm. That kind of freaks me out a little bit. He wasn't just bullshitting me either because he, he knew too much information about it. But no, mm-hmm. Tom Platts was one of my heroes. Brilliant. Yeah, Brilliant yeah M- 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 Milos is like that. You know, you can see Milos and he's like, yeah, he hey, in, in, in 94, when we guest post, you ate grapes before the guest <laughs> posting. <laughs> Why, you know? <laughs> I don't know if he makes the shit up or if it's really true. I yeah. said, look, I really have no idea what you're talking about, guy. Yeah. Milos is a good guy, man. Milos was cool with me. Yeah, absolutely. Good, man. Very Tom- good. Hey, Ian. Tom Since doesn't do uh, interviews, though, I don't think. Say again? I, I said Tom doesn't do interviews, I don't think. Plots. Don't you really? No. Uh, I know some people have... Uh, John Hansen said he's been trying to get him on. He says he can't get yeah, him we on. Should, we should try anyway, so it would be yeah, great. Right. he would be a great mm-hmm. guest. Mm-hmm. Ian, uh, so as an Englishman, I need to uh, tell you a funny story. I mean, for all of us. Okay. So I'm sure you're you watch soccer. 
Premier League. Yeah. So I'm assuming that Arsenal 2002 to 2011 was a pretty big team, huh? Yeah. And then West Ham United in the 2010s, 2015s. And I think Wimbledon and Queen Park, Queen Park Rangers are not that big, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. All right, so I, I got this uh, online client, uh, big, big dude, you know, like 30 years old. And uh, he's like, well, I uh, want to be a bodybuilder. Uh, really, really, you could tell he tried for a few years. And uh, he's like, well, I, uh, I used to be a professional soccer player and uh, I, I broke my elbow or something like that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, it's, I can already, when you ask more detailed questions, it's going to be like, yeah, I, I played in high school or something like that. So he's like, well, I uh, played for Turkey internationally and I played for Arsenal. I was Arsenal's goalie from 2002 to 2011. Wow. And then for West Ham, 2013 to 15, and I and I and I started. Uh, we were on a video call, and I started googling, and the guy was uh, wow. He's like really, he was uh, wow. He was, uh, he was the goalie for Arsenal between 2002 and 2011, and he was Turkish national goalie. You know, yeah. so uh, now he wants to be a bodybuilder. So we'll see how that goes. And we look forward to work with him. I'm sure he should have the right attitude to. Uh, Mm -hmm. to train hard yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. Absolutely. but uh, mm -hmm. I'm positively surprised you know because the last time I heard from somebody I was a soccer pro was the German guy who turned out to be a total scam and, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's quite impressive so uh, mm -hmm. I, I was very happy that I got that guy that's a big switch from soccer it yeah. sure is yeah. it mm -hmm. sure is you know but uh, I think he had to retire in 2015 because of his elbow. So mm -hmm. he's probably training ever since. It's a big switch, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So, so I've got to get this in. My The worst seminar I've ever seen was actually Ray Mensa. Really? It was absolutely horrendous. When was that? He was my workout partner once. He what? We trained together. Ray and I, Ray was my workout partner before Sailor. he moved to Australia in 82, and I moved to Sweden. Right. I trained with him. He came to England, they did, a, they did a seminar, and I was there, with, it was full, it was packed. And he did his, virtually all his seminar on a whiteboard, writing, going all over theory, right? Didn't really, I don't think he posed, I think it was just all, and um, there was a guy there called Billy Payne, who was like, Billy very, Payne. Well, you remember Billy? I know Billy. I know Billy. Wow. You know, do you know Billy really? I got to know him, yeah. <laughs> um, I grew up with Billy. Billy, I've known Billy for really? a long time. Like he could have been a great body, he had great bodybuilding potential. But Billy could have been a top pro, but he just I know what, what 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 happened with him. He ended up going to jail for quite a long you time. Know. I actually used to go visit him all the time, and then when he got out, he lived in my house. Uh, wow. and then he went down a bad road again and I'm still in touch with him but Billy yeah Billy was world class he had like 20 a legit 23 inch 23 inch I'm sorry at like 5 eight. he was incredible oh. I told him I said man I said you should be a pro yep no he was he, he trained with Dorian for a while uh, right I trained with him for, for quite a while um, and we, we had some of the most intense work anyway Billy Payne was at the seminar and Billy could fight Billy was a fighter I mean Billy Billy could go and um, about an hour into the seminar, Billy Payne stood up and he said, are you really trying to tell all these people in this room that you can do one set and train for 10 minutes and build a physique like yours without steroids? And he says, yeah. He said, don't fucking insult my intelligence. <laughs> it, went, it went off. It caught promptly. I thought they were going to start fighting. I literally thought they were going to start fighting. And, I, and I, I'd have put my money on Billy all day long because Billy was a psycho. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, that was my memory of the Ray Mensa seminar. Oh. Well, we trained together, Ray and I. He didn't train that way. Oh, really? We did three sets. We did three sets. You know, I mean, it was low volume. Don't get me wrong. But it, one right. set, no. No, yeah. not at all. Yeah, very yeah. interesting. No. Very interesting. Hey, speaking of uh, this from England, this new guy, what's his name? Andrew Jack something. He's yeah, he's supposed to. He's he's. Uh, doing Texas, right? I didn't see him on the. I, that's what I hear or heard. But then when I went to the competitor list, he wasn't on there. Yeah, let yeah. me see if I can find him. He's not English, is he? Oh, is he not? I don't think he's English. I might be wrong, but I don't. Might, yeah. I don't know. 
And then we have the news of, uh, I don't know if you guys talked about it last week, that Criso is finally coming to the NPC, yeah? Right. He's, yeah. He's impressive, man. Impressive. Yeah. His back's weak, but his brevity yeah. else is pretty impressive. Here, here he is here. JK. Yeah, the front is monster impressive, yeah. yeah. Here's this Andrew Jacked. Yeah. I mean, look at that midsection. That's just beautiful. Yeah, I, I like I like that physique a lot. Very mm -hmm. impressive. So I hope he's competing in uh with you know now in Texas we have Kuglo still has to qualify. Kuglo? Yeah. Right. Yeah, he hasn't competed yet this year. Yeah. No. Right. So then we have this heavily improved Smarty Fitzwater. And it would be interesting to see this guy here. So yeah. where is he from? Does he say on his page? Uh let's see. He's got his own website here. Um, my fitness program. No. Doesn't say. Hmm. Well, I hope he's there. I think Marty Fitzwater, uh, you know, he's now finally got a coach. You know, he was kind of really into I'm coaching myself, but uh, mm -hmm. for most people, that's not the greatest idea. You know, I mean, ask me. And uh, he's now, I think, working with French. Who? Mm -hmm. French Warren. All oh, right. Okay. Oh. So it'll be, be very interesting to see that. Hey, I went to the USA and uh, had a super heavyweight there. He didn't do so well, only placed fifth. And uh, the guy who won wasn't really that impressive. Nobody in the super heavyweight was really that impressive. He went to Tampa the week after and placed seventh. Mm. Stew, beef stew, I think they call him. Yeah. Mm. Beef stew? Yes, stew beef like or something like that. Beef stew. Kind of fits. Okay. Hey, I'll tell you what, if you're talking about impressive pros, um, there's a guy called Dean White who just got his pro card, just qualified for Olympia. He's actually been a PCA athlete since he was a junior. Um, he won the PCA universe in May, um, and he just switched over to IFBB. Um, and he is one to look out for. Incredible balance, yeah. incredible size, fullness, symmetry. Should pull him up, Jason. D Dean White. Dean the Great White is his Instagram. Very impressive. I actually went out for a meal with him after the universe. A super nice guy, too. See, Dean. I got him here. Dean the Great White. Dean the Great White. I have him right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is, it, what, is he a short guy? Is he 212 or what is he? Is it two, he'll be 212, yeah. Yeah, he'll be 212. You scroll down. Like, look, yeah, look at those. Yeah, he's very good. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, see yeah. his symmetry, balance, everything. He's just very impressive physique. I, I, I think he'll do really. I well. hate. I hate when I follow them and they don't follow me back. It's just <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, it's like it's like. Thing. How dare you? Sure, sure. <laughs> I understand if your name is like Ronnie Coleman or so, that's fine. But he's right. following like two thousand people. I follow him, and he has no intention of even. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Dean White, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good that that's from the universe right there. I was judging it. it was, uh -huh. Wow. Very, very nice. Very, very. So uh, how did he qualify for the Olympia? He went to Portugal, I believe, got his pro card, and then the following day went into the pros. Um, he, like, he got his pro card on the Saturday or something and went into the pros on the Sunday and qualified. Mm. What, what, very one, hard, very class. good. So. Wow. Mm. World class, well, definitely world class. I uh, ho hope they treat him fairly, even though he's from well, is, there is only one spot yeah. open in the finale here. Maybe you can slip in there. It's just so brutal this year, the 212. We were discussing it before you joined, you know, with uh, Derek and uh, Clarido and uh, Kamal and uh, Keone. So it's you think Derek's going to get down to 212? You see the size of him now. Yeah, I know, but saying. it's every year like that. It used to be the same with Flex. So, I mean, what else can he do? Or he's not he's not qualified for the Open, so he has he, to get that. Weren't they talking about giving him a special invitation or no? Well, that, 
I don't know. Yeah. He's gonna put it this way: he's gonna have to sacrifice some muscle to get down to as well. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. He's, not, he's not carrying that much body fat. It looks it looks ridiculously yeah. impressive. Absolutely. Yeah. That's true. He'll have a terrible time getting down. Yeah, that's that, mm. he's gonna have to catabolize a lot of muscle to 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 yeah. get. It. I think that'll suck him dry. I do. I do. I don't. I don't think. It, I. I don't. Mind you, when we were competing, JP, I don't know, it was like when you, but the, there wasn't a 212. It was an open. No, That's why everything's competing in the open. I mean, everybody was in one class. One class. No, it stopped in what, 1979? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, um, I don't know. I, I just know throughout my whole career. You no, know, they had the tall and short category. Um, right. Did not uh, f- Frank win, the, Frank Sane won, guys, 79. It was the over 200 and under 200 pound. Okay. All right. So pretty much the same considering the years and difference. Yeah. And I don't know why they stopped that. It was a good idea. Okay? Well, yeah, I think it was a good idea. Can you imagine if, if Lee Priestley had been able to do that? He'd have won it every year, wouldn't he? Sean Ray. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I forgot Sean was quite. How tall is Sean Ray? 5'7. What did he compete at, Sean? Was he less than 200? Just no, about, just, about just over 200. Oh. Over 205, 210, yeah. maybe. Somewhere in there. Right. There's no way that anybody could have beaten him. Mm. You know, I mean, o- o- other than the only, only remote shot would have been like, you know, looking at all the years would have been, of course, Flex Lewis and then uh, Samir. Yeah. But other than that, there's nobody remotely could have beaten Sean. And Sean Day was regularly in the top three. You know? oh, yeah. Sean was very complete. I mean, he wasn't the biggest guy in the world, but his, his balance and symmetry and his conditioning were just... No, but nobody's yeah. as perfect as him. I've never seen another... Well, maybe feel heat, but uh, other than that, nobody was ever this perfect. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I think Flex Wheeler was the, the most impressive bodybuilder I've ever seen. Close yeah, to. I mean, it's just... Other than the first year, this glutes hamstrings were really soft, you know? Yeah. But uh, he was way, way more impressive. Of course, he was so white and so great. You know, and the ratio of the midsection to the shoulders. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I even will never forget when he just walked around without, without doing really anything backstage. It's like wanted to throw up, you know. So I, I, his I best year, they say, is 93. And after that, yeah. he kept getting bigger. And then, of course, he yeah. I mean. Condition. Him personally, he disagrees with that. He keeps referring to the 99, especially that UK Grand Prix, but 93 was out of this world. Yeah. He, mm. 93. Yeah, he beat uh, absolutely stunning Lila Brother at the Arnold's. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Was 93 the, his first pro show? His, his, that was his first Arnold Classic win. I don't know if it was his first pro show. It might have been his per, first pro win. You, yeah, I think so. I think the first brochure was a week before, probably that uh, at Redondo yeah. Beach. I, I was there. I, I was actually at that show, and I was you. prepping for my pro debut. Um, yeah. I'll never forget the day after the show. I was walking out of the elevator. Walk, you know, remember used to be in the Double Tree in Columbus, the, the host hotel. I'd walk yeah. out of the elevator. It was like a restaurant to your right as you walk into the next elevator. And Chris Lund shouted me over. He was sat with Flex. Flex was eating a burger, and I sat. I told Flex how great he looks and everything, how impressive he was. Because that lineup was incredible. Paul Dillick was in it. When they all came out, that lineup was just absolutely super impressive. Mm-hmm. And later that year, I, I I was supposed to compete in the Night of the Champions. I had to pull out due to dehydration. And I ended up competing in the English Grand Prix in 93. That was my pro debut. And I was backstage. And the whole time, Flex is looking at me, just looking at me. And eventually, right before we came out for, for the for the evening show, he uh, he came over to me and said, I know you from somewhere and I have no idea where it is, but I know I know your face. So I reminded him about sitting with him the day after. And ever since then, we were like really good friends. He was he was always super cool with me, he was flex. But uh, yes, so definitely the most impressive bodybuilder. He's, put it this way, he's the only bodybuilder I ever looked at that I competed against, that I looked at and just thought, I can't beat that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's. I, think I feel the same yeah. way. Yeah, you know, I feel the same way. I mean, I feel a little bit with uh, all three, like Sean, Flex, and Kevin, like that, because it's just a certain Kevin, genetic. Kevin had, Kevin had weaknesses, though. I think Kevin was brilliant. Oh yeah, they did. But we know, 
that this fullness of the arms, shoulders and thing, I mean, uh, you know, I, just for me to be the guy like that, I have to risk three heart attacks and uh, be 20 <laughs> pounds heavier, you know? Yeah. So, and yeah, I was always very impressed by that kind of physique, you know? Because I, I could clearly see myself beating a Dorian or an Asser, yeah. but yes. to beat that, you know, that's like, it's, it's, it's incredible, you know? mm. Mm -hmm. Like I was basically there. Everybody else I could look at and say, okay, if I do this, I can beat him. If I do this, I can yeah. beat him. But Flex, I remember looking at him. And in my, la my last year, the 98 Hour Classic, I looked at him. He was getting compared with NASA. And I just looked at him and I'm like, I can't beat that. Yeah. I, I, I don't matter how big I get, I'm not going to be able to beat that. His joints were just so small, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, only, there's only two or three moments I had during my career where I was looking at something and I'm like, fuck, you know, this is usually I was pretty cocky when it came to my abilities and my possibilities. But there was this one moment, uh, a party, uh, grand opening of uh, Gold's Gym in Long Beach. I think Dave Fisher was managing that gym. And uh, since I stayed with, uh, uh, with uh, what's our friend called, the, the, uh, with uh, Ed, Ed. Ed. I mean, he wanted me to attend. And he walked, walked in in a very tight kind of like outfit, looking like Superman. And it, everything, it looked unreal to me because he wasn't pumping up or anything like that. It looked like everything like pumped up with a pump. Yeah? And for a moment, I looked at him. I thought, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, this is just like... Was that Dave Fisher? Huh? This was Dave Fisher? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And then there was a moment, but that was, that was earlier than, you know, then you kind of faster impressed when you're young. But yeah. the 89 guest posing of Lee Haney, in Switzerland, a week after Rimini. Now, in Rimini, he went in pretty overweight. Uh, and won anyway. He had a drug test that it won it. No, that was not Rimini. Or maybe it was. Mm. It's possible. And uh, I, I was, I wasn't really focused. I was waiting outside. He was in a room. He, I was waiting outside. And I wanted to really, really focus. That's kind of the kind of wonderful guy I was on his weaknesses when he came out. <laughs> and. <laughs> So I was talked, well, you know, I'm sure my, my legs are close, my arms are close. And when he walked out, I looked at the legs and the arms and was like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the weak parts, you know, it looks pretty impressive yeah. to me. Yeah. And later on, there was uh, one moment uh, where Dorian guest post in Spain. He uh, was about 320 pounds with striation on his back. Mm. And I mean, he always had space on his back. I think it was just partially his genetics on his back yeah. there from all the hard training also. There were the very few moments where, uh, where I do, oh my God, I don't know, this is doable for me. Mm. I think we all have those moments, don't we? When I was young, I had quite a few. But the only time as an actual competitor on stage was that time with Flex. I remember looking at him and just thinking, mm. I can't be. And I, I actually, that was my last year. I decided to retire after it. Like if, if I if I don't feel like I can be I ultimately be the best in the world at, at this one day that I am doing this shit, it's too hard. The, the <laughs> most impressive thing I experienced around Flex was there was always this word out there that he's not working hard, you know. And in '99, I went to the gym like three or four times a day, you know, from cardio to the posing to you know. And for some reason, even when it was four in the morning, he always seemed to be like there at the same time working with Charles Glass. Mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know it was 98 or 99 and he trained so freaking hard you know I mean I probably he's also an opening to win the Olympia got off the door and retired and I was so impressed I remember one time they did some kind of drop set uh, of upright rows rocks I mean upright rows with the barbell I remember working the whole way the dumbbells and the barbells down and I looked at it and says nobody's ever going to tell me again the guy's not working hard you know so, what was his last year that he competed? 2001. Yeah. 2001, yeah. 2001, I believe. Is that, did he start getting sick then, or he just decided to retire? He had kidney issues. Constant kidney issues, yeah. Uh, okay. I, uh, I don't know well, how he's doing. He hasn't posted anything lately. Well, he does. I follow him yeah. really quite religiously, and uh, he, had, he was in the hospital again Recently, for a yeah. shoulder surgery, and... Right. Got very depressed what I saw from his posts because the pain was unbearable. 
Yeah, uh, at some imagine. point he started to really worry me because he was supposed to be an in and out procedure and you know mm -hmm. the same day but he had to stay there like for a week or longer and at some point he started to even say goodbye and you know to say wow. worry songs i'm glad he's out mm. there doing better yeah that's good mm -hmm. yes yeah. i remember at the um, the, the 95 grand prix tour um we did so the olympia was on the saturday the following Thursday, I believe, was the Spanish Grand Prix in Madrid. We all got up the following morning, got on a coach, went to the airport, flew to Stuttgart for the German Grand Prix the day after on the Friday. And when we landed, me and NASA had to carry Flex into a cab and he went straight to hospital and he stayed in hospital. His kidneys failed on that. Really? Yeah. 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 So, the, so they were shutting down way back then too, huh? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I'm pretty certain that was down to the um the diuretics that they were using um but I'm, I, I don't know for sure i mean I, I don't know for sure but that's kind of what i assume um but yeah i remember carrying him me and nasa carried him into the and put him in the cab and he's, i think he was in the hospital for 17 days straight wow it was yeah. kid related i know that mm. was when demilio had a talk with all of us you know i lose i used diuretics two weeks in my whole career Diuretics, you know, when I, when I, as an amateur, we always had the drug tests. I couldn't take them. Mm. And then um, uh, when I became pro, they implemented the drug tests there. So the only time I could take them was uh, 96 and one week, 97 of the European tour. It's the only time where I took diuretics in my whole life. Did you notice a difference? Oh, yeah. It helped me yeah. tremendously. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, they, just, they had a test for diuretics at one time, right? Yeah. They, yeah. Every show, I, every show I competed, 96, 97, 8, mm -hmm. 9, really? was, uh, was tested. Okay. Hmm. Other than after, the European tour. After Mohammed Benaziz had died, I think they were really clapped down on it then. Yeah. That's when they really yeah. clapped down on the, on the, on the, on the uh, diuretic testing. I took it for my pro debut. I took Aldacto, um, and it nearly killed me. So I never, ever used them again. Scared, mm -hmm. scared the crap out of me. <laughs> the I took Aldactone with yeah. potassium. And you know, with the, the, the coaching now, out. when I coach now, I always saw uh, on the fence when it comes to yeah. how to apply it. You know, I, I, I just not willing to risk anything, you know. It's, let's face it, it's not worth it, is it? You know, it's yeah. the end of the day, bodybuilding. And, and, and I, but then... I, I do like, see sometimes when I look at the pictures later and I see my athletes on stage said, yeah, you know, a, a 10 milligram of Lasix or 20 would have really helped, but I, I just, I just can't do it. You know, it's just either, either the normal kind of procedure I do the tire side a little bit on Friday and maybe a half on Saturday morning. If that doesn't do it, I just try to get people in so good shape that uh, mm. it's not more necessary. It's and not worth the risk. When I see them a few hours before the show and I, and I, I think ah, I need a, it could push a little more. I just, I just don't mm -hmm. want to do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not worth it. No, it really, yeah, it's mm -hmm. just not worth it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's a, it's a pastime. It's a passion, but yeah. and you know, does does people trust you? You know that you, they hire you, they trust you that you're not going to harm you anyway, and then you know they will take anything you tell them to do. Uh, you know, sure. So I mean, your just... your your body's almost at its breaking point already. Yeah. you know you guys know yeah. that more than i do but, and then you add something on that's just like adding gasoline to the fire yeah absolutely mm -hmm. definitely that's what happened to me my pro debut i was i was absolutely sliced man i mean i was shredded i mean I, i've got that that rock picture of me you've seen that picture right when i'm against the rock that was in central park like three days before the show mm -hmm. um i took i took out that on after that and I, looking back, I mean, there's no way I should have taken any diuretic. I didn't need to take a diuretic. Mm. You know? I'd, have done, I'd have done well. Porter Cottrell won that. Charles Clement got second. I could have potentially won that show. And that my whole career would have probably been different. Yeah. Um, they used to judge you quite heavily on how you performed in your first show. And the night of the champions mm. was real. Mm. I see, the, I see guys back. getting hurt, too, with clenbuterol. Yeah. If you go take, too heavy on it, take it. Well, these guys they'll take it year round. Well, I think women more take it more than men, right? I remember a guy dying backstage in Brazil taking glenbuterol to get a better pump. Yeah, really? Oh. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And glenbuterol, it's 
I think it's really, really dangerous. Yeah. And just think of it, what it does, and just look at the side effects of it. I, I used to take it regularly uh, in my preps. The first week was absolute hell. Yeah. I, I could not even really train hard. So first of all, I had to double the minerals, and then I had to just kind of for a few days go to pump workouts because the cramps yeah, yeah. in the body part I trained were so severe. You know, and, and this was at the beginning of a prep, you know, when I had plenty of water in my body. Mm. Yeah, that is just, you know, today, <laughs> thank God, I think a lot of the glabuterol is not that strong or, or fake, you know, because <laughs> I, I keep asking sometimes my athletes, so how you feel about, you know, the first week glabuterol? They go, I don't feel anything. So I know it's not the same stuff we used to mm. take. Uh, what, medically, what is that for? What's its purpose? Asthma. It's supposed to be for asthma, but asthma. I don't even think they prescribe it anymore in the U.S. Okay. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't... I, I remember how I, how I came across Cambutrol. Uh, Katrin Kroppe, the German sprinter, was uh, taking the gold medal at the World Championships away in, 100, in the 100 meter and 200 meter sprint. She, I think she won gold. So I read in uh, newspapers about this Cambutrol. <laughs> And the anabolic effect it has not being a steroid. So I think that's when everybody started to jump on that. I never heard of it before. Mm. Mm. I didn't use it much. Oh. Yeah. No, never used it. Heard of it, but mm. didn't know what it was for. Yeah. Okay. Phil, what yeah. did you use anything like tarots or anything or any fat burners back in the days? No. No. Just doing. Did you do cardio? I'm sorry. Did you do cardio back then? You know, I started cardio in my first first year. I did cardio for a show was in '82, and that was for the Open European Championships in Sweden. So I did so, cardio. That was the first time I did cardio. Before that, other than no maybe cardio. walking on the beach a little bit, nobody really did cardio. Nobody did cardio back then. Nobody. Yeah. Ian, did you do much cardio? No. Yeah. Uh, the the, be the very best I ever looked was the 95 Olympia and I did not do one second of cardio for that show it was wow. oh, I, 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 did a ton, I did a ton of cardio no, I was never a cardio fan I, I mean I, I did implement cardio with other preps when I wasn't getting lean, as lean as I wanted to mm -hmm. uh, but I, I did a minimal amount and I, I'll be honest with you I do a minimal amount of cardio with my clients I was going to ask you your clients now like but some clients don't respond as well as you want them to to the cat mm. to the, the diet, and you don't want to drop the nutrients too low. Mm -hmm. so then I implement cardio. Yeah, my my cardio was minimum this prep. I did thirty minutes tops. Yeah, and that wasn't every day. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I I have my clients doing during the year in off season four times a week. 30 minutes of cardio with sprints because I, I want twice during the half an hour mm -hmm. to get to the maximum heart rate. Because I, I started doing that because I always did that, realizing uh, myself always did that, that when clients came to train with me, the recovery between sets or the ability to really push to the maximum a set just wasn't there because the ability to go near the maximum heart rate wasn't there. And uh, it started to really like, piss me off and this, you guys have to be somewhat athletes too not just uh meatheads you know which can hardly recover mm -hmm. uh, that's why i told you i was slightly worried about when i see uh rami puffing uh doing three poses backstage you know so i start that and then once i go once i go to the diet with them i don't really increase that much you know except if meat or late in the diet when I should start, when we start to feel, fall, fall behind, you know, and already the calorie is totally yeah. deprived. It was an emergency, you know, but I yeah. tried to kind of do mm -hmm. almost the same amount in off season with the sprints than I do on the diet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to see the number. I want you to put the heart monitor on. I, I want to, depending on your age, I want to see the number. How far up can you get your heart rate, you know? Mm -hmm. I, how, 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 how close to max heart rate are you looking to get? What's the percentage? Uh, 220 minus your age. Okay, I remember that. Yeah, 220 yeah. minus your age. And, you know, and if that's not the case, we have to start working on it. And then otherwise, I start to seriously be worried. And if we can't get near that, uh, I'm going to send you to a cardiologist, you know, mm. to see what the reason is. I had this one bodybuilder fighting me. 
uh, that uh, he can't get near that because his heart is so strong. <laughs> that, you know, nobody, <laughs> that's not going to fly here, you know. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, you're going to yeah. a cardiologist or you can train with me, you know. Since, mm. since I had my heart surgery, I, I go on a bike ride most days, it's about a seven mile bike ride. And as hard as I push, I'm lucky if I can get my heart rate over 120. Yeah, mine, mine's hard to get up too. Mine doesn't go Are you on yeah. beta blockers or anything like that? Yes, but very small dose. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that will, that will do that, you know. Yeah. So my stress test recently, I did miss, but a few months now. They, they wanted me to get to the maximum heart rate. Otherwise... Yeah, well, that's what a stress test is, isn't it? Yeah, otherwise they won't let you pass and they will inject you instead. But, but are, they, are they are they count how are they figuring out your max heart rate by actually the, the same method 220 minus your age uh, I'm not sure if they use exactly the same ethics but I know they wanted me to be uh, uh, 165 or something like that or 170 so yeah it must be the same ethics interesting you know I, I, I had my heart surgery like it been two years ago in December and I still haven't had a stress test wow. yeah. they still haven't given me a stress test I probably, I probably should ask them to do that right? Yeah, didn't you? Uh, didn't you meet with Dr. Jason this week? No, I'm, I'm getting my bloods done tomorrow morning. Actually, oh, to him. I go see him uh, next week, next Friday. Yeah, it, it's. I, I'm still stressing about my heart, my whole heart issue. You know, I mean, I had no idea there's anything wrong with me, but so I, 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 I did fly. I really passed the stress test, the 12 lead AKG, and then the insurance didn't want to pay for the echocardiogram unfortunately it just felt like it's not necessary but um, I, I worked very hard for four weeks on my bike sprints before I went to that uh, stress test and uh, they all clear yeah the, the stress test went great I couldn't get gone much longer you know I was really about to fall off that treadmill yeah? <laughs> and uh, my my blood pressure improved tremendously but then once the heat kicked in here I kind of Stop doing the sprints. Uh, I, I'm not big into doing it on the stationary bike anymore. I just miss my bike. And here it's like, you know, 100 degrees when you get up in the morning. Eh? Mm. Wow. And, it's, it's, uh, hot. it's hot everywhere right now. And I, I, I didn't check my blood pressure in a while till yesterday. And uh, it was really about 10 points higher than at the time during the time when I did the sprint. So that's another month, and then uh, the night's getting cooler, and I can't use my bike anymore. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, so absolutely necessary for me to keep doing those sprints. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Uh, yeah. I go, yeah. Can you sprint, JP? Can you sprint without any pain? I my knee. You talk about my knee. My knees are right. fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. my knees are fine. You know, I mean, sometimes. No, my right, my right knee is replaced, so that knee is perfect. It just lost a little bit in, mm -hmm. on the range. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I do a weird sidestep or so, I get a, a sharp pain in my left knee. And in the x-rays, you can tell that there will be a time, maybe five, six, seven years out, when the bones will come together. There are two on the inside. And, and I'm going to just replace that one too, but I'm going to try to uh, you know, wait as long as possible. Mm. So I made a I made a kind of sad observ observation at the USA. So I was sitting there, and then the order of the categories, you know, the had uh, bodybuilding finishing was I was very happy about, you know, with the overall. Mm -hmm. And just before there was the bikini, and on the left and right side of the stage, they uh, it's where the athletes came out and took the pictures and were interviewed by. Uh, you know, uh, Instagram page, uh, podcasts and stuff like that. So when the bikini was over, half of the people left and there was so much commotion on the left and right side. You know, those girls were interviewed by all those different people and took pictures and uh, there was absolutely almost no interest for the bodybuilding. Hmm. Wow. Really? Hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, they're just yeah. they're having a Although they compete with us, the bikini girls, they're having it at all separate, their wow. own world, yeah? which is really way bigger than ours at this point. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Right. So it's, it's still not like that mm. in the 
Olympia because the Olympia is the same. It's the bikini and then uh, it's finished by the... And there, it's probably when you get the big, big guys once a year on stage, they're still, they're still dominating. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. but uh, not there. So I was kind of mm. sad to, to see that, you know, how half of the crowd is walking away and mm -hmm. all those noises and all the stuff on the site. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of disturbing a little bit. How mm. things have changed, eh? Yeah. yeah. Ian, what, what show we got next? PCA? Florida Classic. Uh, next that's, weekend in Deland. That's in Deland. That's the 21st? 21st, August 21st, yeah. When is yeah. New Mexico? New Mexico's already been. New Mexico was June 25th. Yeah, we had what, so What's your next out of state one? Uh, we don't have any more out of state. Oh, the next out, we've got we've got Deland August 21st. We've got uh, Palm Beach Gardens, South Florida, which is the first time I've done an open show. That's on September 11th. We've got Most Muscular, which is our last qualifier in Ocala. That's October. ours, yeah. And then we've got um, the USA Finals on October 29th in Tampa. And then we have one more show before we go to the World Championships. It's November 12th in West Virginia. That's it. That's, I knew there was one. Yeah. That's actually going to be the very last chance for any athlete to qualify for the World Championships, uh, which is on the 20th of November in England. Uh, but it's also going to be the first qualifier for next year's nationals, for next year. Are you guys having a good year when it comes to growth and, you know? Brilliant, yeah. It's been, it's definitely been our most successful year so far. Yeah. Uh, we, we actually gave, um, we, we got a new uh, bodybuilding pro at the Maryland show, Chris Quick, excellent athlete. Um, I'm really excited to see him compete internationally. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a good, I think we, um, next year is going to be even more, probably more shows out of Florida and we'll probably do a couple of less shows in Florida um, just because Florida was kind of our home where we started from. So we had more shows there, mm -hmm. but the, the show, like the Kentucky show, Maryland show, they've all been a really big success. So um, we've, we've already got shows. I'm lining one up in Indiana. I'm lining one up in Ohio. I'm lining one up in New York. I'm lining one up in Texas. Uh, are all your your categories lining up with the NPCs or like even fitness? Yeah, more or less. I mean, we we, we have we, we've got bikini, uh, wellness, but we also do a class called train bikini, which is kind of halfway between bikini and figure. Um, then we have three we have basically three figure classes: tone figure, um, train figure, and women's physique basically so they're well, going up in, 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 in the classic bodybuilding you, did you take over the weight and height restrictions no, from the npc no yeah, no we don't we don't use any of those there is no height weight restrictions without classic oh good so it's, good mm -hmm. well to, to, to me jp classic bodybuilding isn't about your height and your weight it's about how you look right. how you look you, know, you can get 10 guys they, they're all they're all they all meet these requirements that doesn't mean the classic bodybuilders you know it is, yeah, so it, it's purely a look with us and um you know a small weight really it's for the genetically blessed isn't it classic bodybuilding is really for yeah. the genetic freaks mm -hmm. always small wrist you know flaring yeah. lats but w what we do with classic bodybuilding it's more of a really more of a frank zane look with us it's more of a natural bodybuilding look with, with us chris bumstead would be a bodybuilder chris bumstead is not classic in, in my eyes that that's i mean he's an incredible physique i love his physique but that's not what classic is with PCA. Classic mm -hmm. with PCA is a much more natural. In fact, the, uh, Mr. Universe, Adrian Gray, he's a lifetime natural bodybuilder. Mm. So we, we, we have some very, it, and it kind of opens it up for a lot of the natural athletes to compete um, in, in that class, whereas they would have no chance in your height weight restrictions with uh, MPC. And yeah. then for bodybuilding, we do three height classes. We don't do weight classes. I honestly feel like height classes are fairer to the athletes because he's like you know, a, a six foot guy can't compare with a five foot six guy if they're both mm -hmm. the same way. You've got no chance. Mm -hmm. So at least by comparing heights, you're the same basic structure and now you can compare apples and apples. Mm -hmm. than apples and bananas, you know? Yeah, that's a good idea. Cool. I think I think how we do it is it's very mm -hmm. popular with athletes. It, it makes sense to me, um, and obviously we keep in line with the PCA internationally. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but I'm, I'm excited for the World Championships. We've got some, we've had some really good athletes this year. This is over in England? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's in Birmingham, England. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping to actually host it in the US once we get a bit more traction and we get a, a few more athletes competing with us. I'm hoping to host the World Championships, all, all the universe mm -hmm. in the US. So that, that, that's a goal of mine for sure. That'd be good. Hey, yeah, maybe you can find a promoter in California. I would love to find a promoter in California. That, I, I, the, the, the thing with me, Phil, I do not approach promoters. I wait for promoters to approach me because I don't want okay. to be trying to push a promoter into doing something. Uh, gotcha. I need somebody yeah. who believes in what we're doing. And we do a lot of things differently. We do a hell of a lot of things differently. The biggest thing that we do differently is we don't charge the athletes a fortune. Our yearly membership is 50 bucks. Our entry fee is 50 bucks. We only allow one crossover. Um, and internationally, no, no crossovers are allowed. You're only allowed to do one class. Mm -hmm. uh, just to us, it's, it, I feel like a lot of federations have made it to a money-making ploy and all the money is generated from the athletes. And I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it, the, the money should be generated because you put on a good show and you can sell tickets. So we take a lot of pride in our stage, our photography, and we try and offer the athletes and the tickets, the, the, the tickets people can see as cheaply as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. we just want to get, we want to get good athletes. We want to get bodies. We want a good atmosphere, you know, that's our whole thing. Yeah, so, yeah we, had a, we had a local show here. Uh, we only have two promoters really in California, but you know, three and uh, I just, you know, wanted to go support a few guys uh, because it's five minutes from my house. Hundred dollar for the pre judging. Jesus! Wow! Wow! Yeah, it was. It, they had so many That's athletes. Crazy. You know, that hundreds of athletes. It's just ridiculous. So I, I it was pretty much empty. You know. Of course so, it was. Hundred hundred dollars. You know yeah. what? That's that's wrong, man. That is absolutely is. wrong because what they're doing, they're banking on all the relatives of those athletes to pay to, right. you know, and, and I, I I see it all the time. You'll you'll see somebody post, oh, this is me at prejudge, you know, this is me at the night show. And there's one person going, yay, come on. Yeah. It's obviously the and then even, even if, the video. if they come with the family, the family stays in the hotel or, you know. Yeah. You, you, how are you going to do this if two are kids and, you know, prejudge? Yeah. And yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah. That's unaffordable. Mm -hmm. That's really unaffordable. I mean, what we do, our, mm -hmm. our show tickets are thirty-five dollars generally off, maybe forty, depending on the venue. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's for the whole show. You know, we do pre-judging and the night show all wrapped up into one because we do a through show. We actually judge it and then award the trophies there and then. We do it with the, the athletes don't go away and come back. So you know that the, the, and what we do, uh, any kids twelve and under are free. We don't charge kids to come into a show. Um, because I'm, I've had a lot of clients in the past that I've prepped them for shows mm -hmm. that couldn't afford to have the kids to come and watch them at the night show because it would be too much money on the entry fees and the membership. Only kids that young, anyways, they're gonna, be, they're gonna, be, they're only gonna pay attention to whoever's on stage, their mom or dad or something, you know. Sure. Yeah. They're not gonna. So it looks like after this year, the Olympia's moving permanently to Florida. Oh really? Yeah. Did, did they oh, announce that? that? Uh, yes. Oh, I didn't see that. I talked to uh, Tamer, the organizer, yeah. and he said that Vegas is just gotten too expensive. Mm. So is it going to be Orlando? Yeah, yeah, probably for the foreseeable future. Yeah, well, they, where they have it is is a really good location at the convention center. I mean, it's yeah. it's right in the middle I, of everything. Orlando is now the they surpassed Vegas in conventions. Yeah. I can believe that. The convention center in Orlando is bigger than Vegas's convention center. I think it is. I mean, the show was never at the convention center. They only had the expo at the convention center. Mm -hmm. And this year, uh, I'm really curious about that venue uh, at the Hard Rock, but it must be also be too expensive. I think yeah. they're only going back because they kind of had a contract before uh, COVID. Well, the expo is going to be at a different place, isn't it? I have no idea. Yeah, they announced it. They said that the expo was at, uh, I think it's at a hotel across the street from the. Yeah, if there is not some kind of pre judgings or shows held at the expo, I just have no interest in that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. No, I didn't know they were, they had officially said that it was coming back to Orlando. Yeah. So <clears throat> now you guys, you guys can come stay here. Yeah. Yeah, you guys come stay here. I'm only 
an hour from Orlando. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, man. Which is next year, definitely. Mm -hmm. Phil, are you going to the Olympia? Not this year. No. I plan for maybe 23. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm definitely going to be going next year now with this bucking, bucking all under. Yeah. 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 See what kind of reception I get by the MPC APB. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll be very warm. Oh, they'll have the red carpet for you. Yeah, Absolutely, for yeah. So they can go and dump me in the river. <laughs> yeah, don't forget in this world, we're very, most people here, we're very self involved. We will probably. That's uh, true. You know, no, that's true. They're very yeah. true. Yeah. Especially in this game, right? Yeah. 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 Ah, well, guys, I'm starving. Yeah, I don't know about y'all. All right, perfect. Yeah, okay. Something I'm not coming in late. I apologize. Ah, no problem. Let's uh, you guys work on a guest for next week. I don't have anybody lined up unless you want me to work. Yeah, on I'm going to try to reach out to Mike Christian again, and and I want to reach out to Tony Pearson also. Okay. See what mm. his schedule's like. We both Greg. Yeah. I'll reach out to those two. Yeah, even if you want to have them both. Does anybody I'll know call... John Brown? Who? You know what? Yeah, I talked to John on the phone years ago, so I have his number. That, have his that'd, number. Be, that'd be an interesting person to get on the podcast. It, it would be. Hmm. It would be. Yeah. Yeah, you guys know. Just, yeah. I, I'm, I'm open for anything. Do. Set it up. Yeah, just let me know. See what we can do. Definitely. All right, guys. All right, guys. Have a good night. All right, guys. Have a good evening. Yeah,